What's up Chiefs Kingdom, Noah Gray here, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Joss's channel and check out showmefootball.com for more. What is up everybody, welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com and we have some breaking news to talk about as Kansas City Chiefs defensive end Charles Amenihu has been suspended six games by the NFL for violating the league's personal conduct policy. And I am here to react and give you guys my thoughts on this breaking news as uh, it kind of came as a shock to the Chiefs' kingdom that the Chiefs would be without one of their bigger free agent signings for the first six games of the 2023 NFL season. And look, there is no other way to put this. This is a massive blow to the Kansas City Chiefs' depth at defensive end. I said from the moment that this signing happened in the offseason that Charles Amenihu was essentially the Frank Clark replacement. If you just look at the play style of Charles Amenihu and Frank Clark and the production, it's fairly similar. Like Charles Amenihu is a similar profile to Frank Clark, um, but he had more upside. He was cheaper than Frank Clark would have been if the Chiefs had kept him around on the deal that he was on when he was here. Uh, it just kind of seemed like Charles Menehu was brought in to replace Frank Clark. And Frank Clark was a guy that played 70% plus of the snaps for the Kansas City Chiefs defense the last several years. So Omenihu was being brought in here and he was being expected to play a pretty significant role. And now you're not going to have him for the first six games of the season. That's more than a quarter of the season. And I guess we can't totally say that we're surprised by this because it was acknowledged when the Chiefs first signed Charles Amenihu that he was arrested during last postseason for suspicion of domestic violence. And we saw a situation similar to this just last season with our very own Willie Gay, who was suspended four games uh, at the beginning of last season uh, for a domestic violence charge or uh, I should say a domestic violence related charge and some accusations. Uh, but ultimately, the NFL suspended him for four games because they felt like he violated their code of conduct. And if there's one thing that we know about the NFL is they're very inconsistent when it comes to suspensions. Um, Results seem to be all over the place when it comes to suspensions for uh, similar cases. You know, I mentioned the Willie Gay one that was very similar to the uh, matter that Charles Amenihu was arrested for. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know all the specifics. Um, each case is unique in its own way, but I would like to know from the NFL um, what was so bad about Charles Amenihu's case that made him get six games as opposed to Willie Gay getting four games last year. And I'm sure I'll get comments down below about this. I have no idea if Charles Amenihu can appeal this to get it down to four games. Uh, I have no idea if he would even be allowed to appeal or if maybe he already tried to appeal before this or whatever. I know in Willie Gay's situation last year, uh, he just didn't appeal. He wasn't going to appeal. And there are reasons for that. I know that if you're going to try to appeal um, and you end up losing the appeal, uh, while you're appealing, your suspension isn't actually being served. So you're just, you know, if you lose the appeal, you know, you're delaying your suspension. I don't think Willie Gay wanted to risk doing that. And I imagine Charles Menehu wouldn't want to either. You have to wonder, though, now, is this something that the Chiefs saw coming? Did they know this was coming down? They knew about the arrest uh, prior to signing Charles Menehu, but did they anticipate this kind of suspension coming? I've seen some people on Twitter already saying, surely they saw this coming, and maybe they did. But I have a feeling that not even the Chiefs thought that Menehu would get six games, even if he got suspended at all. And this just goes back to, like I said, some of the inconsistencies we see with NFL suspensions. But what sucks most about this Omenihu suspension is that it comes at an awful time. And I mean just an awful time. Because now, this kind of magnifies the Chris Jones holdout. Chris Jones has all the leverage now because the Chiefs know that they need Chris Jones and they need him back bad. Chris Jones knows this as well. And he can use this 
as leverage in contract negotiations because, look, Chris Jones, while I believe he will be back by the time the regular season comes, I wouldn't rule out 100% the possibility that Chris Jones could start trying to sit out regular season games. We've seen players do it before. So that's a concern that I have. Secondly, uh, now there's an immense amount of pressure on the other defensive ends that the Chiefs do have. Uh, I want to quote my guy, Jordan Foote, who put out this tweet on uh, Twitter, or I should say X, but I'm still going to call it Twitter forever. Uh, but he goes, without Charles and Menahue factored in, here is the experience in the Chiefs defensive end room. Mike Dana leads the way with over 1,300 snaps. George Karloftis is second with 730 snaps. Then after that, it is a massive drop-off. Malik Herring with 88 snaps. Joshua Kando with 46 snaps. And I'll just say right now, if Malik Herring or Joshua Kando are major factors in the Chiefs defensive end rotation, that's a problem. And then after that, it's um, rookie Felix Inudike Uzama, uh, rookie BJ Thompson, and then the undrafted free agent Truman Jones. And so, like I said, there's an immense amount of pressure now on the defensive ends that the Chiefs do have. FAU is going to have to come out the gates firing early. Like, that's, you know, that's something that's just going to have to happen because the Chiefs defensive end room is calling for it. George Karloftis, you're going to have to hope he takes a huge step this year. And then I don't like the fact that we're once again depending on Mike Dana to be one of this team's main pass rushers. Mike Dana is the perfect rotational guy, but as soon as you ask him to become a starter, that's when things get shaky. Uh, Go back and look at the beginning of the 2021 season when the Chiefs defense was absolutely horrible and the pass rush was terrible and Mike Dana was headlining that pass rush um, out on the edge and it's just like the Chiefs didn't have what they needed at the edge position. If Mike Dana is your most experienced guy, your best guy that you have that you're putting out there, that's a problem. And like I said, the timing of this is horrible because it's not like there's a bunch of quality free agents now out there that you can sign um, to absorb the blow of Charles and uh now being suspended. And this is why I think maybe the Kansas City Chiefs didn't totally anticipate um, Omenahue being suspended is because I think if they knew Omenahue was going to get suspended and suspended for six games, then they would have signed somebody else. They would have brought somebody else in because I just find it really hard to believe that the Kansas City Chiefs looked at their depth chart at defensive end behind Charles Omenahue and said, you know what, if this guy gets suspended, we're going to be fine because I don't think they're fine. I really don't. And I think if this was like a two-game suspension, then yeah, you would have been fine. You could you could have gotten by, you know, the first two games of the season without having Charles Amenahue. I understand that. But six games is very significant. Like, that's more than a quarter of the season that you're not going to have this guy. A guy that probably maybe was going to start and he was going to play a major role. And also, the Chiefs talked about when they first signed Charles Amenahue, Brett Veach talked about how they were going to use this guy inside a lot. And now you can't do that either. And that's a problem because the Chiefs are also extremely thin at defensive tackle. Once again, Chris Jones is holding out. And then behind Chris Jones, the defensive tackle room is not great. You know, you have Keandre Coburn, the rookie, Derek Nottie, who's coming off his worst season as a Chief, Deshaun Morton coming back from a torn ACL. Like, Charles Amenahue being suspended for six games is a massive deal. Because I'm telling you right now, the Chiefs were expecting a lot out of him. I just refuse to believe that the Chiefs knew that Omenihi was going to get suspended and looked at their defensive line and said, yeah, we're going to be all right with this. I just I don't think that's the case, and that's why I don't think the Kansas City Chiefs necessarily were prepared for this. And so now the question is, what do you do? Do you sign a free agent? Is there anyone out there you can bring in? The Chiefs historically have kind of always gone with in-house guys before going outside of the organization to find help. That's just kind of how they've operated. Uh, I brought up 2021 just a minute ago. I'll do it again. They badly needed a pass rusher that year, but I think they were very high on the guys that they already had, and then the game started and we saw that they clearly didn't have enough. And I think they sometimes value very highly and sometimes overvalue the guys that they do have. But personally, I would go and bring in a quality veteran free agent. There's not a ton of guys left out there, but there are a few that would make sense for the Chiefs. Uh, 
personally, I would love for this team to go out and bring Melvin Ingram back. I think that guy was awesome when he was with the Chiefs. I think he was still pretty good last year for the Miami Dolphins. Uh, as far as I know, he's still a free agent. He won an AFC Defensive Player of the Month just last season. Like, I would be trying to get Melvin Ingram to come back in here because that guy is an awesome pass rusher, and he's played in this defense before. Then there's Carlos Dunlap, who played for this team last season. Um, although Carlos Dunlap might still be considering retirement, but I would still call him up and see what he's doing and be like, hey, would you like to come back? That one would make a ton of sense. And then... uh Hey, I'm just saying, Justin Houston is still out there. Justin Houston is unsigned. Now would be a perfect time to, uh, you know, heal that relationship and try to chase a ring with Justin Houston back on this team. Just saying. But those are just a few kind of obvious options that I think of. Those are names that first come to mind uh, when you talk about free agent defensive ends still out there because I do think the Chiefs need one. If I was Brett Veach, I would go out and sign one, like, now, uh, because this defensive line without Charles Menahue and potentially without Chris Jones scares me. Uh, this defense would take a massive step back if you're without not just one, but either of those guys to begin the season. And even if Chris Jones is back for the first game of the season, which a lot of people think he will be, you know, he's going to have missed all of camp most likely. And who knows how the chemistry is going to be. And I just, this is not, a good situation for the Chiefs. It's not a good look. It could not have come at a worse time. And I guess we shouldn't be surprised because this arrest was very well known before the Chiefs signed to Menahue, but I guess a lot of us and maybe even the Kansas City Chiefs just really didn't anticipate him getting suspended for this long. But here it is, and that's the news. Charles Menahue, the Chiefs' uh, big free agent signing at defensive end, suspended for the first six games of the season. But I want to hear from you guys what – your reaction is to this. Uh, what are your thoughts? Um, are you worried about the Chiefs defensive line now? Are you worried about their defensive end depth with Charles Amenahue out of the picture? Let me know down in the comments. But with all that being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com. And I will see you all in the next one. Go Chiefs!